thank you god bless you welcome in jesus christ name we really appreciate you you are servant of god and i want to bless your hands now with great favor just as god blessed joseph in genesis 29 when he was sold to be a slave but he had a dream a dream of god a dream of god the bible says and the lord was with joseph and whatever he did was prosperous even the person who took joseph to be a slave noticed that jehovah was with joseph whatever he lays hands on prospered that anointing rests on you now in jesus christ's name favor from god i'm bishop peter gatimo i'm reaching out to you from apostolic faith church bahati nairobi i introduced to you the vision god gave me of a church 10,000 kingdom center is kingdom center for people healing god showed me a place where he would demonstrate his gifts we already have it in a robbie kaguda road and in jesus name we believe god will appoint you to be one of the partners we want to pay we already have uh, an offer to pay 340 million a bank a loan for the bank and we want to pay immediately at least 130 kenya shillings million kenya shillings allowed 850 000 us dollars as the first instrument and in the name of jesus this is kingdom thing is christ's work and i pray that god now touch you and you'll be provided with my contact the the the, the bank details and i want to tell something people who have now started partnering with us in this glorious altar that god is raising have testimonies all over the world and please join us let us god elevates raise this altar to heal nations count you as a blessed person at the level of the altar note is a church that you have 10,000 members. We're trusting God every Sunday. We have three services, 30,000 members. Let God speak to you. Just be open. Just be open. Allow him. And things will happen through you. And please obey the Lord as he leads you. It will be powerful. Remember our message is, you'll not be crushed. Though blessed from all sides, you'll not be crushed. And I'd like us to, to, to share some reasons. If you go to Ezekiel chapter 37, one of the things why you not be crushed is because you allow God to remain in his position and office. You don't diminish God. Even if situations appear to be tough, you are made. There's a strong, there's a, a single said, stayed upon Jehovah. Hearts are fully blessed. Fighting as, as, as he promised, perfect peace and rest. Your mind is stayed upon Jehovah. You cannot think otherwise. You are so molded by the reality of God that you can only believe and trust God to remain the way he is and in his own wisdom. And that's why Ezekiel, the Bible says the heart of the Lord came upon him and he brought him out in the spirit of the Lord and he set him down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused Ezekiel to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. Ezekiel says in verse 3, And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O Lord God, you know. I would like you to say this as you face 
a very challenging situation. Don't break. You may not have it all within your mind. Allow God to have a space in it. Say like Ezekiel, Oh Lord, you know. Let me say this. The moment you admit that God knows, Oh Lord, you know, can these dry bones in an open valley change to be human beings that are walking around? Is it possible? It's true, it's beyond human might. It's beyond any imagination. But can you please, please admit, oh Lord God, you know. And I, 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 I thank God because when Ezekiel admitted that, oh Lord God, you know, the Lord used Ezekiel to speak to prophets at the dry bones. God, you make you an instrument to do the impossible when you admit that, oh Lord, you know, you know, can this cancer be healed? Oh Lord, you know, can this loan be cleared? Bank loan be cleared? Oh Lord, you know, I'm depending on omniscience of God, omniscience of God. I'm depending on omnipotence of, omnipotence of God. I'm depending on El Shaddai. I'm like Abraham in Genesis 17. He was told from today, Abraham, walk before me. Be thou perfect. Be thou blameless. And I will make my covenant with you. Not our, my covenant. Abraham, I am the almighty God. All sufficient, self-existing God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Just walk before God and be blameless. Admit that he knows. Lord, you know, you know. Can this barren woman conceive? Lord, you know. And when you say, God, you know, stay there. Wait for the next move. You find anointing coming on you. And God saying, prophesy. When you are demand, God, you know, I can clear all these demands. Don't move away. Stay there a little bit. You find yourself getting anointing. You becoming an instrument to handle what was beyond you. And that's why Ezekiel found himself. The Bible says, when he said, Lord, you know. Verse 4 says, again he said to me, prophesy to these bones. Say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord says, Lord God says, surely I will cause breath to enter into you. And you shall live. Verse 7 says, says, So I prophesied. And suddenly there was a noise. Suddenly rattling. And the bones came together. Bone by bone. No bone missed its position. And verse 9 says, I prophesied. Hey, things started happening. There was meat muscles in the body. Systems were established. The that prophecy, weed came and there was breath. And in the dry valley, and in the, in the valley of dry bones, there appeared a huge army, a huge group of living people. I said to you, friends, in Jesus' name, you will not be crushed. Just admit God knows. And right now, as you said, right now, as I speak, say it, say it in your heart, Lord, you know, you know this man can be, can be handled. You know this son of mine can be a believer. You know, you know very well, Lord, there can be a way here, there's a way here. And don't move away, stay on. And God, you immediately uh, empower you 
to speak and to do great things. You will not be crushed. Another thing is knowing your God very well. The Bible says uh, when, 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 when scriptures talk about our knowing of God, knowing our God, uh -huh. in Daniel 11 verse 32, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flatly. But the people who know their God shall be strong and will do great exploits. Knowing God results into two capacities. You become strong. You are not only strong, you are a performer. I say knowing you are God well brings two things in my life and your life. You become strong and not only strong, you start doing things that are glorious. And they that know their God shall be strong and they will carry out exploits. And I want to say you will not be crushed but God is going to make himself known to you in a level where you can do exploits. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Job, if you go to the book of Job, when Job was so desperate and everybody was saying, yeah, gentlemen, you are, you, are, you are crushed and you can't do anything. Your God has deserted you. There's no evidence of God. If you go to Job chapter 19, verse 25 for I know knowing your God I know that my redeemer lives Job did not have anything around camels, sheep oxen, everything disappeared children his body was completely under pain boils all over pain, pain loneliness pain of the highest order what kept this man built ordinary? He said, I may not have anything, but I know that my Redeemer lives. I said to you, the starting point of coming out of dry life, coming out of pain, coming out of desperate situation, before God performs a miracle, you need to declare that you are my redeemer lives. Let's start here. He could be sitting on you. Let, tell the devil, devil, my redeemer lives. Let demonic powers and strongholds know they cannot remove this truth from ash. Our redeemer lives. And Bible says, he, he, is, he does not only live, but he shall stand at last on earth. In other words, he will not allow things to continue indefinitely. Somewhere, somehow, he will stand on earth. Standing on earth is different from standing in heaven. Standing on earth means God transcending into our real, real lives and on earth, earth means reality of this life. He will start on earth. He will appear here where we are suffering his coming. Where, he, where we have pains and we are suffering he will appear. He will start on earth. Before I go to heaven, he will start on earth. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9 the eyes of the Lord moves to and flow across the whole world that he may show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Before you go to heaven, I said before God call us home, he will first of all give us, gives us a final season where he will stand on earth and approve us. Before Job went to heaven, God gave him a chance for what we call God appearing on earth to approve us before, a, before man to disapprove our sufferings and to approve 
our righteousness. God, you come. I say, God is coming. He shall start on earth. And Job says, and after my skin is destroyed, this I know, in my flesh I will see God, whom I shall see myself. He will not be a stranger to me. Others, he will not be a stranger. He will appear on earth and all people will know we are not strangers, we are friends. Jesus bless the church, bless God's children. And as also says, and my eyes shall behold and not of another. Two things. When he appears, he will show every person that I'm his friend. When he appears, my eyes, my own eyes will see him and not of another. In other, he will appear because of me. My moment, my moment of vindication are coming. I say you not be crushed. God, you appear somewhere and vindicate you. In Jesus' name. And that's why Paul, even before he died, he had a testimony of the power of knowing Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, for this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Can you imagine this a statement of a person in prison whose soldiers are preparing to torture and cut off his head? behead him. Yes. At such a moment, he says, I know him whom I've believed in and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. I submit this to us, friends, that he is able to keep. No one can remove the that truth from your heart. Yes, devil uses threats, but we are persuaded that our God is able to keep. And that's very important. You will not be crushed, friends. The Lord will bless you. You will not be crushed because very soon, God is releasing your Rema word. Rema word is the word that specifically determines your life, rules your life, commands circumstances in your life until Christ call us home. You've lived a life that is so much mixed, so much uh, in, 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 in you, you are so much in problems that it's not well clearly defined or determined. Let me say that God will soon reach a reward that you always rule over. That's why when Joseph was taken to, to Egypt, he had seen a dream where his 11 brother, his brothers, mother and dad, we one day bowed to him. He had anointing of leadership, kingship anointing. So they put him to be slave, but instead of becoming a slave, he becomes a CEO. They put him in prison, Instead of becoming a prisoner, a desperate prisoner, the leader of prison resigns and have Joseph as a leader of prison. He go before Pharaoh. Pharaoh resigns and Joseph takes over. I say this, God is releasing a Rema word that you determine any stage you go into. It's good that I advise you to go through, read Genesis chapter 37, Read Genesis chapter 39 and chapter 40. And you see how, how the word, the Rema word can command situations. Because in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's very, very important in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I'd like us now 
to think about his God's goodness and and his works. If you go to Second Kings chapter twenty, Second Kings chapter twenty. Hoping that you are able to access your Bible. If you are not able, we can depend on what I have here. Ezekiel was sick near death. And he said the prophet, son of Amos, went to him and said, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Now, this is a man who is sick and near death. And um, the Lord sends a very powerful, powerful major prophet, Isaiah. Tell him, the way he is now, this sickness, you're taking him home, you're going to die. He'll pass on, you're going to die. And now, the Bible says, Hezekiah the king, he turned his face towards the wall and prayed to God. What kind of prayer is that man praying? He is praying a prayer calling on God, calling God into remembrance. Remember now, O oh God, I pray, I have walked before you in truth and in royal heart. Remember, Lord, one thing I want you to do, Fresh, can you walk with God in royal heart? God can remember one or two things concerning your royal heart and change some prophecy because it's God. Because the Bible says, as he said that and wept bitterly, it happened before his sire had gone out into the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him and said, Go back! Go back! And tell this man, the king of Judah, the Lord God of your father David has heard your prayer and have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On that day you shall go up to the house of God and I will add your days. 15 years. The God of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the God of royal hearts, the God of royal servants, can hear a cry and change issues and bring others that you favor your heart and cause you to know that there are things that God can remember about you. Sometimes you are not able to, to pray. You are not able to have any words to express. But if you are walked in royal life without mixing yourself, you can tell God, God, remember, there are times God you operate on past records of your royal heart and can decide to reward you with some joy and some years of favor. You're not going to be crushed. You can talk to God. And God can add you more ears. Even if you are so sick. This one was so sick. And, and, the, and the prophet confirmed. The sickness is unto death. But this man calls for remembrance. The king. And God asked him 15 years. I say you not be crushed. Because the merciful God is your friend. And you have worked with him. And God can show you extra mercy. In his treasure, he has extra mercy to release. In his treasure, he has extra ears to release. In his treasure, he has extra property to give. In his treasure, he has extra grace to release. You will not be crushed. I pray that God will show you his mercy and add you ears of joy and cause you now to experience a life of grace that you never thought you occur, but is a product of his decree and his love. Receive his cover in Christ's prayer.